deep in a secluded mountain village. Legend tells of a mighty saw forged in a distant land and placed in a tool hold by St. Joseph himself, waiting for a worthy craftsman, one who believes in quality, craftsmanship, and beauty to come and pull the saw from the workbench. Hello everybody, welcome to the video. My name is Maze, and today we're going to be talking about the Japanese saw. We'll go over what exactly is a Japanese saw and how it differs from traditional Western saws. We'll also go over the basics on how to use it, as well as a few tips and tricks. First thing though, I feel it's important that we address the elephant in the room. And that is that it is completely normal and acceptable to pick up the saw every once in a while and wield it like it's a sword. So we're going to be talking about mainly the Ryoba saw, which is the one shown, which I believe means that it's double-sided or double-edged, but it's hard to translate Japanese because I don't know the, the kanji and stuff. This double-edged feature is one of the things I love most about my Japanese saw. That's because it has both rip-cut teeth and cross-cut teeth which makes it two saws in one basically, which is why it's great for a beginner because you're basically buying two saws for the price of one. It also makes it great for joinery because you have both types of teeth available to you in one tool. And so you only have to have one saw in your toolbox. So for those of you who might not know, a rip cut is when you're going into the end grain, generally along the length of a board, splitting it down between the fibers of the wood. The ripping side of the saw is the side of the saw with the larger teeth that are more spread apart, that are all going in the same direction. Cross cutting, on the other hand, is usually when you're shortening the board and you're cutting across the fibers, you're having to sever the fibers of the wood. The cross-cut teeth are the ones that look smaller. There looks to be twice as many of them and they go in opposite directions. And so in this picture, we could see that the cross-cut teeth are on top and the rip-cut teeth are on the bottom. So the main difference between a Western saw and a Japanese saw is that you pull towards you instead of going away from you with a Japanese saw. And what this does is it puts tension on the blade. So as you pull it, it straightens the blade out and tightens the blade, making the kerf a lot thinner as opposed to the Western style where you're pushing and the blade kind of wobbles into the cut. The pulling of it straightens and puts the blade under tension, which allows you to make a better cut. So another thing that a Japanese saw has that Western saws don't is this tooth on the end, this special saw tooth. I'm sure it's got a nice Japanese name, but I don't know what it is. I always just call it the last tooth. And this tooth you could put into a knife wall and you could push it along your knife wall to, to deepen your knife wall and to create a nice kerf, a channel for your saw blade to just rest in. So you could spend time and slowly cut out a nice canyon or channel for your saw blade to rest in so you can create accurate cuts. So here you could see me using the back tooth to ride along a knife wall I've made to deepen that, that knife wall and give myself a knife channel that my saw could just fit into 
so I don't have to worry about keeping it straight. It will just fit into that channel and stay straight. So then on the other side of the saw, the tip of the saw, you'll see this other special tooth. And I just call this the first tooth or the front tooth. And this one is so when you're cutting tenons or dados, you could lift up the saw blade and slice those last few fibers with it to get that bottom just nice and straight. Because the saw naturally tapers and it's a lot harder to just have it straight. You tend to overcut your line a little bit. This way you can lift up your back end a little bit and slice those last few fibers with that front tooth and give yourself a nice flat bottom. And here you can see me kind of demonstrate what it would look like inside the cut when you do that. So those characteristics are what makes it different than a traditional western style saw. The fact that it cuts on the pull stroke, the different handle, and those special teeth that it has. Another thing that's different is you don't usually sharpen these saws, you usually just buy replacement blades. But the replacement blades are cheap. And the fact that you're getting two saws for one, you'll have to buy a couple of blades before you've you know, lost the money you saved and just not having to buy two saws to start off with. So now I'm gonna demonstrate just a few different cutting techniques. This is the rough cut technique. I'm taking the cross cut teeth and I'm just looking at the reflection of the board in the blade and I'm using my thumb to kind of give myself a guide and I'm watching the reflection and making sure it looks like the board just continues off into the blade. And that helps me stay plumb and square. And so you just establish the curve along the top and then you go down the side, always looking at the reflection. And then you just cut through the board. Now with practice, you can get pretty good at this, but I call it the rough cut technique because I wouldn't trust myself to do this on something that was super important but when you're just making your first cuts and breaking down your your stock into the more manageable pieces this is a nice quick and easy way to get decent cuts and that cut came out pretty good actually I'm not gonna lie they don't they don't always come out that good but you could see with some practice it's possible to have a nice cut with it and so for the next cut, which I call the standard cut, and I'm, I'm sure there's better names for these cuts and other people have better names. I've heard them referred to like in classes, like third class, second class, first class. But I just call the first one rough cut and this one standard. And all you really need is for this one is for a pencil and a speed square or a framing square or a combination square. So for this one, you just take your square and your pencil and you just draw a line across the top and then line it up and draw a line across the side, making sure they're, they line up. Then you take your saw and using your thumb as a guide again, to just start on the corner and just follow the line. Start slowly at first and just always making sure you follow the line. Go a little bit across the top. And then once you've gone a little ways across the top, you can start going down the side. And now you've established kind of two planes that your that your can will be a guide for your saw and should just the saw should want to just follow those lines and stay straight.
So that's how that one came out. Looks looks pretty good to me. So this next cut I call the finishing cut. And this one's good for that last cut that has to be perfectly accurate. Or if you have different angles that are harder to cut, like in one of my videos that I'll leave a link to in the description where I make a plane, I have to cut a really acute angle. And so I'll do a finishing cut. And that's where I establish a knife wall that my saw could just rest in. And what you're gonna need is a combination square a marking knife, and a chisel. So in this one, you take your, your combination square and your marking knife, and you, you cut across the top of it. Kind of make it easy first cut, and then a deeper, and then a nice hard third cut. And just keep going until you have a nice deep cut. And then you want to take the corners and put your knife right in that cut and push down a little bit and then do it on both sides you want to make a nice cut along the top and along both sides so then you just put your marking knife into the into the cut and move your combination square up to your knife to cut down the one side and then you do it again on this side see that it goes into the knife cut then the combination square comes up flush with it you gotta do it again right and then you use it and you cut down the one side and then you take your chisel and kind of push into your into your cut mark on your from your waist side and this gives you a little bit of a of a channel or a canyon and so you don't have to do much. You just push it in a little bit, just enough to cut off that little flake. And you want to do it, on, of course, on all three sides. Now these should be very small and you should be able to just come up with your thumb or your finger and just flake them off. And it will give you a nice edge that you could rest your saw or blade against. Then you take your saw and use that back tooth to to right along that knife wall that you just made and give establish a curve that your saw blade will just be able to fall into. And just take your time and sometimes it won't be perfect and you just stop and, and correct yourself. Always wanted to make sure you're falling right along that knife edge and, and just getting right up to it. And then, so once the curve's established, I'll go across the top and deepen that a little bit. And then I'll go down the side closest to me and just same thing, just following along the knife wall. You know, if it starts to go out of straight or stray away from the knife walls and just stop and go back a little bit and keep on cutting until it's straight. And then once I'm done with this side, I'll go on to the other side and make sure I follow the same thing, giving myself any, any mistake or any drifting that might have happened. It's my chance to correct it right here. And Obviously, the, the bench is in the way. I'll have to move my clamps or whatever. This setup is more so I could record then because it's convenient to cut this way. Normally, I would just put it in my vise, but with the sun, the way it happened last time with the plane, I decided to try it this way. And so then just go down that one side and then once you've had, once you've gone down both sides and across the top, then you could just go to town. It should just follow along that, those curves that you already made. It likes to follow the path of least resistance. So once you've 
establish what that is, then you can just cut it. And so then there's that one. All three of them kind of look the same, but that's not always the case. And so now we're gonna do a rip cut. And what I like to do is I actually like to start off the cut with the cross cut teeth, because it just seems to sever the fibers e easier and start the that curve a little bit better. And since they're both on the same tool, on the same blade, I just gotta flip it around, right? So I'll just get it going with the cross cut teeth and establish it. And then I'll just flip it around once it's established. And then just use the rip teeth to rip down the side of the board. So now I'm just gonna cut, make a cut like if I was cutting a tenon, just to show you how easy it is on the saw. And so I'll just cut the cross cut. And since, again, the saw's got both teeth, it's real easy just to be able to flip around, especially when you're cutting tenons like this. So I usually stop right before I get to my line, get down to my line, check it, and then I'll use that front tooth. You'll see, I'll use that front tooth to kind of flatten it out and try to get it straight across. So then I'll put it in the vise and kind of make sure it's in frame, I guess. And then I'll use the, the cross cut teeth again to establish that curve again along the line that I drew. Now if I was, normally if I was doing a tenon, I would use a knife wall and mark these out to be more precise, but I'm kind of doing just the standard cut way just for the sake of the video but again i'm using that back tooth to to help cut across and establish a nice curve And now that it's established, I could switch over to the, the rip teeth and just start cutting. It's always better to take your time to get that curve nice and established, and then your blade will just want to follow it. So then you just cut down one side, straighten it out a little bit, and then you'll see me walk over to the other side. Normally I would just flip the board in the vise, but for the sake of the video so you guys could see it, I'm going to walk around.
so I just knocked a bunch of stuff off my bench. <laughs> it happens. I'm not the most organized guy in the world, but it wasn't anything important. And now I start using that front tooth to, to straighten it out. And now I could just turn the saw over and have my crosscut teeth. And I left it a little proud, and now I could use that front tooth to slice that little extra bit and just have it come off. So here I'm cutting a 45 degree miter and the main thing I'm trying to show you is that the workpiece is tilted. For me, I'm just still cutting in a straight and square line and I've moved the workpiece. Don't try to put it up and then cut the angle at 45 degrees. Tilt the workpiece at 45 degrees and then just cut it straight. So you train your, your muscle memory just to be able to cut straight and you move your workpiece and and your lines so that you just you're just cutting straight and then for 45 degree angles you could look inside the the saw blade and then it makes a square kind of reflection and for these cuts i like to use the cross cut teeth because you are severing fibers and that's the video so i hope you enjoyed that if you found that informative or entertaining in any way, if you would hit that like button, I'd appreciate it. If you're new to the channel, uh, hit that subscribe button. I recently have gotten uh, a few new subscribers, thanks to Matt Cremona and uh, James Wright. So welcome to those people who subscribed recently, and, and thanks to those two gentlemen for sending people my way. I plan on doing mainly project videos for, you know, the stuff I'm working on as I try to get my business up and going, but I'm also going to do some instructional videos and some tool reviews. So if you're not subscribed, subscribe if you're interested in that stuff. And if you know anyone who could use this information, uh, please share. And thanks for watching. I really appreciate uh, the comments and the likes and, and uh, the new subscribers and hope to see you around and I'll catch you in the next one.